Here we are at the Battle of Landskrona. This is uh, a couple weeks, maybe 10 days after uh, Malmo. <coughs> and the Swedish are outnumbered again, of course. The Danes, however, have been somewhat disordered after the defeat at Malmo. Their army is somewhat smaller than the Swedish. Uh, than Before Malmo, the Danish army was much, much larger. And after the defeat at Malmo, uh, there's something closer to parity here. Um, it's a very, very hot day, which is going to affect continuation rolls. If we look at the terrain very lightly, these are walls like in Lund. Uh, they may have little openings, just little farm separation walls. There's uh, a village down here, another village up here, and the church there. This one may be two, but most of these are just farmhouses. They don't really count for anything. Uh, a little bit of marsh coming off the stream in some of the lowlands here. And <coughs> forest wise, uh, we see the Danish morale is not bad, it's not terribly good, but the Swedes, as usual, have higher morale, better leadership, slightly higher morale. We'll notice these units, these are uh, sort of a Swedish peasant levy. They have not only no pikes, but significant uh, penalties to their firing ability. Apparently, Danish managed to break the Swedish light, uh, left wing during the battle and the very existence of these prevented the Danes uh, from being able to pursue properly and allowing the Swedish calf to reform. One interesting thing we see here and this is uh, apparently because of Lund both sides have kind of integrated infantry into the calf's wings um, on, the, on, on, on both sides of the field, making a combined arms type of arrangement. Now, that of course reduces some of the maneuverability of the wing. Uh, if you remember from the series, these continuations are affected by whether you're a cav or an infantry wing. For example, down here. So, and, and likewise, some of the order change effect. So you're giving away a little bit of flexibility here, but for that combined arms advantage. And we'll see how that works out. Here, here it's really still in an experimental stage. The, uh, aren't fully committed to it. Uh, what do I have? There's an option to make this sort of rear cav from the center to be its own little wing for the Danes. Uh, I'm not going to take that option. It doesn't have a victory point cost, but it just seems like the Swedes can use the help they get. Uh, the Swedes initially start off, like I said, with less forces. But again, they need higher victory points, uh, significantly higher. They need to win this battle in a big way. And the historical was in the marginal Swedish victory level for here. I'm not sure I really believe that that's a marginal Swedish victory. Uh, it may be in the game terms, but again, <sighs> the Swedes historically basically ran the Danes out of the area. They couldn't besiege Landskrona. It was too powerful a, a fortress, but they did uh, largely force them to withdraw from Scania outside their fortresses. Okay, we'll start. Part way through the first turn, just looking at some of the approaches, the two wing, right wings, the Swedish and Danish, started out in charge formation. I feel like that's some kind of indication. That's where the attack has to begin. Obviously, trying to pull out of it isn't a bad thing, and it's allowable in this scenario. 
Um, the Swedes advanced forward but didn't get a continuation. And you can see the effect of the broken terrain. There's a couple of choices here. One is to go, move forward in open order, which probably is the cheaper one, except you kind of don't want to be, at least with infantry, this close in open order. With Cav, the reform, reforming Cav isn't that hard. But these aren't pure Cav formations. I, learning about the reforming Cav thing uh, and, and how effective that can be, that's something maybe I started to play with at the end of Lund uh, under advisement. Um, over here, we're seeing the Danes facing the same kind of problem. Again, the terrain, the wall, the, the, the steep slopes. This is breaking up the formation. Um, so in their case, they were able to get into a make-ready formation, which is one of the ones I like in order to form up. These are bigger formations that really work well with that. But it's easier to get into make-ready than it is to get into receive charge. And it's easier to get back into charge. Uh, I just consider it a more flexible formation. And it probably doesn't take any longer to do it this way than... Uh, dropping directly into the uh, the receive charge. And obviously, rally is the fastest way, but yeah, that doesn't make a lot of sense. You know, hey, we're in the middle of a chart. Uh, let's stop and uh, rally. Um, so I sent Christian over. He'll be able to help uh, bring these back into into a formation. But you know, they're going to face this again when they hit here, and then if they continue up, they face it again. It's a hard game to maintain your units in, in a fighting cohesion uh, with these steep slopes, with this kind of terrain. Okay. So that's the end of the first turn. Puts us at, what, like 1040. What do we see? Well, you know, the main thrusts were already handled before. The one thing we do see is the Swedes have moved their center forward a bit, and that includes limbering up their guns. It looks like they want to go for a heavier assault on this uh, main Danish force. And I'm not sure, it feels unnatural to set that big infantry, well, it's not that big, to set that center with the guns, etc. moving, but I don't see the Danes moving forward at this point. Now granted, if they got a complete breakthrough here and rolled up the flank, I'm sure the rest of these forces would move forward. But to me, those guns don't mean much, and as long as I'm still in charge formation or orders here, I'm going to have to keep moving forward. I might as well move forward with as much as I've got. Uh, and we see the, this group uh, trying to reform. Uh, Christians running back and forth, grabbing units. Personally, I don't think he wants to make this attack. Uh, my desire would be to swing this way, seeing that the Swedes are committed there. But eh, we'll see what happens. Uh, we definitely do not like crossing this bad terrain, this gully, in order to attack. So at the end of two turns, uh, what does that put us? 11 a.m. Not a lot of difference. Uh, you know, advancing down here, getting the formation broken up. The king's trying to help rally stuff. Uh, this is in make ready, which means since it's a small formation, it's able to work pretty well. These guys, I dropped them into receive charge. They're just too big uh, to move over this terrain in any other formation, really. Once they clear a little further, they may move back up to make ready. But right now they just, I was looking and they, everybody was formation damaged. I had to move Christian somewhere. Let's drop him back. He's trying to use him, but he can only grab one per turn, one per uh, action and gults, you know, who knows how many. But chances are in this one, without a lot of continuations, he's not going to get a lot of activity 
where he's able to change stuff. So it's pretty much where I'm at. Battle's not yet started as far as I can see. So as the Swedish right uh, continues to make its way up the hill, what's left of the in order units, which is none now, but at the beginning of the turn it was some, they're all formation broken. Well, the Danish left decides to counter charge. It's only a limited counter charge in the sense that yes, they moved a bunch of people forward, but they only are attacking with two of their cav units. Uh, we'll see what the effect is. Briefly, one Danish unit that attacked got repulsed. The other one destroyed the Swede and chased it off the map. So, what happened? Uh, the Swedes continued moving forward. We had that little skirmish here. No real engagement here, but what we do see is the Danish right pivoting and marching into position to threaten the Swedish center. Now this opens things up for the Swedish left. I'm not used to the game being quite this mobile feeling. Usually things just sort of plod towards the front. But I'm trying to say, okay, stop with your preconceived notions of what 30 years warfare should be like. And try to exercise the game a little bit. Uh, this isn't a period that this particular part of the period is not what I'm thinking, so I should stop thinking in strategy that's already, you know, 40, 50 years old at this point. Alright, let's see what happens. End of turn three. The only real thing we saw happen is uh, this left flank wing, whatever, marching forward, taking formation hits, of course. Uh, got charged back here. Another Swedish cav down. They're not happy with what they're seeing. And this feels really uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't like being flanked in this way. I know that this is coming in and is tricky, but the terrain here is more annoying than the terrain here. So I feel like the Danes have the edge at this point. So, of course, I'm going to uh, probably beat the historical winner and attacker and this, that, the other again.